songs. Show us what you got. This week, the Marthithians watched 1994's Road to Saddle River, the Canadian cult classic film by Francis Damberger. They listened to the album Doolittle from 1989 by The Pixies. And they ate some sun-made orange cream yogurt raisins. Hologram program activated. And you know what? They can also be a maraca. A maraca? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mitch. I bumped you. Oh, man. Line three. Do a test, please. I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, you I, are. I haven't gone away. Oh, we didn't lose the mic? No. Oh, good. Fantastic. Um, I got a little carried away with Harry Belafonte. Yeah, so sun <laughs> made sun made raisins. Everybody knows the box. It's tiny. I don't remember it being this tiny. Well, it's I remember them from smaller. Halloween handouts. Yeah. And I always thought, who the fuck gives you raisins for Halloween? What? You got mad at the Halloween raisins? Be yeah. happy you got anything at all at Halloween. They weren't like yogurt covered raisins. <laughs> oh, they were just these raisins. are new. Yeah, that's true. These are new. Just plain things. old raisins. Those, I want chocolate, <laughs> bitch. Those are the people who put like little tubes of toothpaste and toothbrushes in right. your in your bag. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Last uh, year, get out of here. <laughs> last year for Halloween, I had some uh, some kids ask, "Do you do you do you Snickers bars?" No. <laughs> Well, do you, do you have Twix? Do you have licorice? No, I have chips. Well, I already have chips. Do you want no chips? <laughs> no. And they just stuck their bags out, and I was like, shit. If Kid, I had have done that, man, I, I would have got slapped. Kids are getting shitty. You know, I'm even a little bit offended at Halloween when a kid comes to the door, and they don't even bother to say trick or treat. None of them do. I'm like, what the fuck? And I wait for them. I'm like, Yes. How can I help you? And they give you this yeah. fish-eyed <laughs> stare. It's like an angry fish stare. Like, why are you wasting my time? Right, just put the fucking candy Man, you in know why I'm here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trick or treat. Trick or treat. But has anybody ever tricked yes. then? You've been tricked? Well, in the old days. No, I've not been tricked, but in the old you days we tricked? did trick. Oh. Because you'd go to the door, and if they just didn't answer and the lights were off, you're like, okay, they're just not home. Or they purposefully at least Are situated like themselves away. so they're not there. Right. But then you'd have people open the door and be like, yeah, I don't have any candy for you. <laughs> Why'd you even bother opening the door? Because <laughs> like, maybe they don't want to, I don't know. So you pee on their doorstep. Oh, what? You just go straight to the pee? I thought you were going to say you like toilet paper yeah, there. You can only, or you can only pee on so many doorsteps. There's, you'd have to drink a lot of liquid. Yeah. Thankfully, some people gave pop. Oh, I remember the first, my first memory of getting pop for Halloween. A, it was orange. Orange pop. And B. Did you just say orange? I did. I said orange. Orange. Oh, okay. Orange. 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 Mitch, orange. say orange. Well, now I'm thinking about it, so I'm going to say it no, orange. Orange, 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 and orange. Orange. Anyway, it some was... Some say orange, some say orange. It was, it was, it was a can of uh, Crush. And my understanding of Halloween was that you give something and you get something. So little, little tiny me yeah. spent probably a good minute trying to pull something out of my bag that I wanted to get rid of to give Trade? to the neighbor that had given me the soda can. <laughs> Needless to say, yeah. I was laughed at. Aww, it is an adorable that, story. That is pretty cute, how though. Did you, like, how did you initiate the first transaction when your pillowcase was empty? <laughs> Just got it, and then Just you got, got to that house. In my, right. in my memory? Point. No, the funny thing is, is that in my memory, like, I know that it was my next-door neighbor at this the house that we lived in then, so I couldn't have had anything else in there unless my parents, like, filled it right. so that even if I only did the neighborhood houses, I could still empty it out and have so much gas. Candy, right? Just to make oh. you feel good, like you got all that candy. But I was weird. also like five, right. so who knows what part of that really <laughs> Did happened. Did you guys do in school, they had the, um, the little change boxes for... Uh, UNICEF? UNICEF. Oh yeah. They don't do that anymore. No. You can't trust kids with money. I guess not. I guess they never took them to school. We'd do big things. You'd, everyone would go to the gym. They'd oh, yeah. We'd do the jump rope for heart. They'd give us the envelope, and we'd go around collecting money. In an envelope? 
Yeah, it was just like a big envelope. Oh, we had like cardboard boxes that you yeah. folded out. Oh. Yeah, it popped out the box. It in. So you'd have this big bag and you'd be like, yeah, I raised all this money for starving kids. Woohoo. And now they just don't do that? They don't trust the nope. kids? Because the kids would take the money and run. Oh. But the kids, oh, I think it would take a smart... Kids aren't honest anymore. I think it would take a smart kid to be like, we could scam the charity. Because the idea of even being like, yeah, we'll do that. That's really stepping outside of yourself. And I'm not sure there are a lot of children in the school-going population who would even stop enough to think about the potential criminal enterprise that would be fake fundraising. Right. Because the principal is doing something for someone else. But I don't understand how the kids could... Well, I guess kids are, can be crafty when they want to steal shit. But, like, we had to... They had to fill their name out and say how much they pledged, like, on a paper if you're donating money. So then at the end, you would add up all those totals. And then if the money didn't add up to those totals... Yeah, but Unicef then, was like... Pennies. Yeah, you it was. Like you would go around with box. this little cardboard oh, box and be like, right. do, do you have loose change for UNICEF? Oh, okay. So there was no accountability. Oh. You know, you could easily just be like, I, I I didn't actually take the box out or my box got stolen. It was a little more slack. Lax. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. You know, because we were... It was the honor system yeah. back yeah. when children still had honor. Slash fear. I remember once getting like loose Kids change. Shits today. Loose change. Yeah, but it was like... A pocket full of change. No, it was like three loose loonies. And I saw them go in, and I remember waiting till I like be thinking about it. The rest of because you know every town has like one of those big long streets that everybody does. Yeah. So it was at the top of the street. So we had to do the whole rest of the street, and then the other couple streets, and then go home, and then dump it out, and then fish through all of the candy <laughs> to find these three loonies that would not be enough to buy you know a handful of candy. Okay, what? wait, you're trick or treating in this in this scenario? Yeah, for trick or treating, oh, okay. I got the two. I, got I the thought loonies. you were talking about someone was donating a shit ton of candy. What are you? Yeah. About. yeah, but not like chocolate bar candy. Not candy bar like candy. Like nickel candies. That's different. I'm not a gummy person. They're not person. a nickel anymore, though. No. I remember when I was they were a, penny. a kid, I were a and penny. I found a single loony in the playground. I was like, probably like six or something. Oh, and I like oh. saw it. I, I saw a little twinkle there, and I'm like, no way. There's no way. Like so I jumped <laughs> down there, and I picked it up, and I held it up. This was like the most money I had ever oh, held at that time. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh man, after school, Totally getting a bag of chips. You and held it up victoriously. I did. Like you found yeah. a Pokemon Master Ball. Yeah, it was very probably one of the best days of my six-year-old life. Oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah. It's good to have these nice memories. So it was. raisin sakas as uh, Halloween candy. You didn't like these? Uh, that's, no, no, that's not what he said. No, oh. I just said normal raisins do. But these, you know, I don't actually like raisins. Right. I don't like them in baked goods. I don't never have liked them as a snack. So I, peanut glossettes, but not raisin glossettes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I never like the chewiness of it, but th with but this works. I like these. Yeah. They're good. You're one of those kids who, when they ate an oatmeal raisin cookie and thought that it was an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, <laughs> were like, Pleh. yeah, <laughs> disgusting. Yeah, I just spit that shit out and like, what the fuck did you just do? Why'd yeah. you give this to me? You're sick. <laughs> You're sick. They're so weird. I mean, the orange cream yogurt is really pungently orange flavored. Mm. When yes. I first, the first one that I had, I was like, oh, it tastes the orange, the orange. Uh, the orange. The orange. Okay. Go ahead, oh, sorry. This is, this is almost Stephanie Lana. You guys you haven't really met orange, Stephanie Lana yet. I say orange. Um, Let's call the whole thing off. Sorry, what were you saying? It reminds me of uh, Terry's chocolate oranges. See, mm. I hate Terry's chocolate oranges. I know, but you like but these. But I like these. When I when I first the first one I, I had an orange cream. So, I guess Terry's chocolate orange is just an orange. It's like milk chocolate, chocolate kind of slash dark chocolate slash white chocolate slash milk chocolate mint. They make like four different kinds of Terry's chocolate oranges, and I like three of them. Yeah, it's a weird. Maybe it's the yogurt. Maybe it's the raisin. But I actually dig these. It kind of reminds me of like an orange float, but on a raisin. Do you find the raisin compared to the sugary orange yogurty thing is a little bit molassesy? The raisin itself? Yeah, like mm -hmm. I feel like the raisin's got a really I feel like the raisin just had, mellow adds flavor. Make texture to the orange. So it's flavor. an or it's a textured orange thing. You don't really pick up a lot of raisin. No, but I'm not really familiar with what raisins taste like mm. since I don't like them. Apparently, see, you, know? you have to be familiar with the flavor you hate, though. No, because it's more the texture that bothers me. Oh, I'm not a big. I don't, I don't really like the texture. You don't like chewy things necessarily. Mushy, chewy. Yeah, it, it really depends on what texture. the texture is combined with. Mm -hmm. And raisins are almost never combined with anything 
that matches their texture. I just, I, yeah, they're just kind of chewy. It's like, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of like uh, dates or or uh, I love apricots or plums or whatever. Dried, dry I'm out. assuming. Yeah. When you say that. Dried, dried fruits. Um, not a big fan of them. Trail mix? Do you think that the no. chocolate and the nuts with the raisins balance? What do you? What would it take to get you to to find raisins palatable? This. If you feel just this, just this. <laughs> this is amazing with my beverage, by the way. Oh, is Somehow it? Somehow it makes it like creamier oh, and more wonderful. delicious. Well, just you, yogurt. You maybe have. They come in just raisins. regular yogurt. And I'll these. probably never eat them again. You say that now. I'm just gonna put yeah. a bag on your doorstep one day. <laughs> I'll give them to my daughter and be like, "Fuck this." You're gonna be. I didn't <laughs> like them before. I don't like them now. You're gonna Despite be in line said. at like superstore or something, and you'll see them in the little impulse things. Can you imagine if they put raisins? <laughs> Why do they not put better shit in the impulse area? I know it's always just gum. To be fair, I almost bought my first Mr. Big bar in years because it was only a dollar. Mm. I couldn't remember the last time I had a Mr. Big bar. I love bar. Mr. Big. There was a crunchy bar there. No. I love toffee and co like sponge cake, so oh, I almost bought one of those. I don't those. like that at all. You don't like crunchy? No. I don't like those. They're, they're like, is that the one with the orangey kind of, um, no? no? Which one am I thinking of where it's like crunch? But inside is like an orangey toffee kind of thing. No, no idea. Oh, anyway, sorry. I have no idea. A crunchy, what. A crunchy toffee. Maybe. Uh, Toffee's kind of hard. I prefer the gooey, Isn't gooey it? ones. Some of it. Depends on the kind of toffee. Soft toffee. Softy. 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 I've never heard of softy before. Softy. Softy. Soft toffee. Hard. Hoffy? Harfy? How would you say? Hard toffee? Hard toffee. Sli toffee. Hard, hard, hard toffee. Hard, hard, hard toffee. <laughs> Did anyone else come up, come up with any funny um, orange yogurt raisin puns to oh add to our God, chocolate no. collection? No. Did to you? Our, no, I didn't. Can we give you no, congratulations? <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. Uh, you know, somebody should Photoshop the picture that we threw up for congratulations and make it orange. And make them orange. But not yellow, because that might get a little racist when you consider how I say it. Orange, though. <laughs> Orange is okay. Orange is Orange, you glad racist. I'm not a real racist? <laughs> there it is. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, like, raisins are grapes, right? Yeah. They're Correct. Grapes. I don't get it, though. Sun-dried. So they, they just take a bunch of grapes... And they throw them in the sun. I would and be, then they, and then they, uh, they just dry down to this little wrinkly, yeah, you know, nut sack looking thing. Yeah, I guess it's the same with prunes. They're I would be dried. surprised if any place is still sun drying. Like I'm sure it's all right, right. laboratory done right now. Oh, of course. But I'd be interested. Yeah. Could you make raisins at home with a food dehydrator? Yeah, I, why not? I feel like you could. In my imagination, they're just like little, they don't, raisins, and maybe it's the color, you know, like maybe sultana raisins are green grapes, and these are like purple grapes, because what I am hung up on is how, because I, I had green grapes for breakfast today, so how would I be able to take that, how would it dehydrate down into this black shriveled up thing, mm -hmm. so it must be the grape that you're using. Yeah. Uh, do do they taste different? Do the green grapes taste different than than dark grapes? Yeah, of course they do. I think. But green, green grapes tend to be more sour. Yeah, I agree with that. Because I. And then there's purple grapes and there's red grapes. They all have a different flavor. So what's a grape flavor then? How can there be a purple? Well, How is that not. grape? A, that's a manufactured flavor. We've <laughs> yeah. discussed uh, this in yeah. a lot of episodes. Well, I know, but I think that that's really one of our our go tos. I know, but yeah. who decided then that this grape? is like the grape flavor the first person who manu who marketed <laughs> a grape flavored something i stand by what about concord grapes mm. concord grapes are what is very concord grapes it's a oh it's a, they're big round they're big and round no those are globes concords are small oh google I'm on it. Somebody look this shit up. Because, like, Welch's always talks about how they, they use They always Concord. say Concord. Yeah, they're the little round ones that look like blueberries. Mm. You yes. know, though, yeah. wine is all made from grapes. Yes. So, I mean, you, you make that comment, but wine, if all made from grapes, and every grape defines what kind of wine it is, 
obviously there's a very different um, types of types grapes. of grapes and flavors yeah. of grapes. I'm not sure how many types of wine. I, I, I don't think that generally you make wine with the skin on. So sometimes they do. Yeah, with skins. With you can skins. buy wine that are really? that's brewed with the skins. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you can, I just assumed that they always did. I didn't know that. No, I'm pretty sure that it's like if you were to go to uh, a wine brewing place, you know, where you can brew your but, own wine that they, they store mash and everything. The grapes don't they mash the juice out and then make wine out of the juice? Right. They don't just ferment the grape whole. No, they mash it up, but sometimes they don't like filter the skins out. Oh. Sometimes it's all just. And what's the benefit of that? Just extra the flavor. flavoring change. Changes. Yeah. It, it, isn't that wine is crazy how they yeah. make it, isn't it? It it's is amazing. It's amazing. Of all the things that get <laughs> brewed in my house, wine's not one of them. We make cider, we make mead, we make beer, we jack the mead and the cider to make apple liqueur, and that stuff will burn your ass you off. Jack it. <gasps> so good. Freezer jacking. I don't so know what that you, means. It's um it's like distilling. Oh. But yeah. less than because you're only doing it in your freezer. Yeah. So you put a, a two liter bottle of your, your cider, let's say. Okay. And then you put it in the freezer. And then all of the water freezes. And what's oh, left is the alcohol. The really then, good stuff. Yeah, so yeah. you're concentrating it. Gotcha. So you turn on the two liter upside down, you take the top off, and then the, li the liquor comes out, the water stays frozen. Right. Yeah. Anyway. I always jack it in the freezer. Oh, no. So Concord grapes are <laughs> There goes your Christmas presents. <laughs> they're often used to make grape jelly, grape juice, grape pies, grape flavored soft grape drinks. Grape pies? And so, so maybe a Concord grape grapes pie. is the grape flavor. It's probably the, pie. yeah, grape is Concord grapes. But some grapes don't make good wine. They just don't make grapes, no. uh, wine out of those grapes at all. So yeah, yeah, grapes are very interesting. Um, and some probably make better raisins than others. And, and none of them are safe for your dogs. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Mm. I was reading at this dogs? stuff that can, like, poison dogs and cats. Almost and, anything. And it seems that way. Like, yeah. you give them grapes or... But what's uh, weird is that they'll eat it. Why yeah. wouldn't they? They don't know any better. They're stupid animals. Yeah. But in the wild, most animals are like, nope, won't eat that. That's poisonous. To That's me. different, though. How can you compare a house pet to a wild animal? I don't know. You'd think they'd have some of the same instincts. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Well, how do they have like feral, you know, hordes of feral cats in certain parts of the world? They survived without eating stuff that killed them. That's true. Maybe and my cat outside. It's not like he's running around outside eating all kinds of poisonous shit. He's catching birds and mice. Right. My old lady cat. You're not supposed to give them avocados. So this is especially true for dogs. Avocados. That's another. So one. yeah. Uh, allegedly, the, and a it's because they it's so fatty, which uh -oh. makes it good for people, but it can upset animal stomachs. But right. b a big thing for dogs, especially. Don't give your dog peaches. Don't give your dog apricots. Don't give your dog avocados because the pit's poisonous. Who's throwing a peach like it's a fucking tennis ball and saying, go get it, Fido, have fun, and just leaves the pit in there? What fucking person is doing that? It's that's tossing. stupid. Yeah, that's pretty Sorry. dumb. Oh, you're tossing tea peaches to your dog that you don't have? <laughs> yep. Oh. My old lady cat loves I avocados, toss, though. I toss them to other people's dogs. Oh, I, I get them to play fetch with Next me. time I will let my dog poop near your lawn. I wouldn't do that. Aaron just grabs a bag of peaches. All right, do I'm going that. down to the park. <laughs> I wouldn't do that now. Oh my god. <laughs> now that I know peaches are... But the peach is fine. If you want to if you want to slice up the peach and give it to your dog, yeah. that would be fine. It's just the pits are bad. It's the pit. Yeah, and that's it's that's the what pits. Uh, <laughs> Pits. It I is. Know you tried to stop yourself from saying it that. is the pits. Yourself <laughs> mid sentence. Sigh. Um, yeah. So do it all. Right. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that we all absolutely adored this album, and then we can just move on. You know what? I did love the album, <laughs> and and what I found um, interesting about it is how many times I thought, man, these guys must have been influenced by the Pixies. 
Right? Yeah. It, right? it becomes obvious that they're a huge influence on a lot of artists. I oh, agree. I, okay. So you're saying you're, you listen to current artists that were influenced by the Pixies. Yeah. You can yeah. hear current artists in the Pixies. Modest Definitely. Definitely. No. Oh, yeah. They listen to the Pixies like, like a all lot of the that. time. And probably still today are listening to nothing yeah. but the Pixies. Not to diminish their but own artistic doing. integrity. Um, but it's, it's clear that that's first. a heavy, heavy solution. A lot of that, like... Uh, solution. Uh, uh, influence? Uh, influence, that's it. Yeah, mid '90s, like um, alternative indie in a sense, I guess, in early indie sense. But oh, you get <laughs> my phone's vibrating. Oh, sorry. But yeah, no, they were they were crazy in some of the stuff that they did, and and for coming out in 1989, yeah, or this album, they had stuff earlier, all the way going back to like '85. It's, it's I kind think. of the genesis almost of yeah. modern alternative rock. Yes. For and sure. I, I read alternative rock on their wiki page, and I didn't kind of get that at first. So I was kind of maybe not now. Right. When you think of what alternative rock could be now. Right. You well, that's the problem with labels like alt alt rock or alternative. Yeah. You know, even in the '90s when bands like Goo Goo Dolls and stuff were considered alt rock. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Yeah, I mean that's funny, right? Because we don't now we don't it think is. of it that way. No. Um, and at the time they were, you know, top 40, hit number one, that kind of thing. But basically anything considered alt rock is something that doesn't fit the sort of status quo of rock. Right. Yeah. That they just it. they just kind of throw well that's that's a little alternative so we'll just put it over that's here. That's a little unique. Yeah, yeah that's a little. That's a little well, creative. and that being said, there's <laughs> no such thing as an alt rock um, section in a CD store anymore. I, yes, I still go to HMV and other CD. I was going to say there's wow. a CD store. Yeah, there's like umbrella terms that encompass every thing. So even pop and rock are in the same category. It's rock slash pop. Rock pop. It's rock pop. And then pop, you rock, have pop, punk rock. and you have metal. And that covers like your entire gambit. Whereas back in the day when I was a kid, there was, you know... So many genres. There were tons and yeah. they actually broke them down into those genres. But I guess not enough people buy CDs anymore. So They just kind of lump it together lump it. now and they say you got Bieber next to... Right. Damn it, I was going to The band. The band, there you yeah, go. I mean, that. I go into... Uh, but that's the thing too is I go into record stores now and they never have anything that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I basically sit at the counter with them at the computer and say, Do you have this? Nope. 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 But we can order all of those things. Yeah. Eh, thanks. They're less impulse buy if you have to order them in for me. Yeah. You I could have can't go into a record store and flip through the aisles anymore. That's There's no point no. in it. Because all they have is your top forty shit. Oh, I feel differently. The last record store that I went in, although to be fair, it was tiny. It was obviously yeah. somebody's oh. passion you gotta go project. To You're a talking about store. vinyl, though. Yeah, what are you talking about? I'm he just, just meant like H &B. albums, like records, oh. like in the umbrella term, like a record. Like a physical piece of media. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, I meant a vinyl store. If you go to a good yeah. vinyl store, you can still find that stuff. Yeah, that would be yeah. saying, Yeah, yeah okay. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Distinction made. Distinction, but did well, you... Well, I'm old. They used to just be called record I'm stores. I'm old! They just used to be called record stores, you know? And kids Were they? Know when, yeah. Because yeah, what happened a lot? You're, oh, I'm going to go to the CD store. I'm going to go to the album store. Yes, it was. People a now we're starting to differentiate what a vinyl and a record is because it's becoming popular again. But back then, it was just an umbrella term for an album. You didn't go to the album store. You went to the CD store. I never went to the. I went, I to, the went to the CD store. store. Yeah, I, th I remember saying CD store. That was the term when I was a kid. That's weird. There was never yeah. when we were younger though. There was really no other option. If you got a tape, you got it from like the discount bin at right. the gas station. Yeah, they didn't sell it was the tapes. Simpsons. No, at the as CD a store. Kid, they sold, as a little kid, I started with tapes. I started with tapes. Yeah, yeah but I never went out. I was never old enough to go out and buy tapes. Oh yeah. No, yeah, I yeah, wasn't. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I went out. Um, like, well, I wasn't old enough. It's not like I was earning an income by then, but. And you my, were cognizant that you were able to would, be like, I want to go do this. My dad would take me to the record store and I'd buy tapes. And the tapes were always in these like long plastic containers that oh, the yeah. tape was like locked into. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. And so you'd, I'd flip through the tapes and I'd buy a tape. They used to have that with CDs too. They did. They were bigger, yeah. 
Auto reverse. Auto reverse. Auto reverse. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you bad, did there. I'd go to bed listening to an album, and I'd wake up listening to the same album. I one time had I had a Beatrix Potter tape, and when I was under the age of five, one time our smoke alarm went off in the middle of it, and I could no longer listen to the Beatrix Potter tape because I thought every time I got to that part, <laughs> the fire alarm was going to go and our house was going to burn down, and I had like this little Danger. child emergency sack yeah. with like my favorite toy and a pair of socks. Oh man. <laughs> Oh. Your your go bag. Yeah, I had a just... go bag when I was like four. I don't now. Yeah. So Doolittle was. Go- I mean, we all seem to think that Doolittle. Yeah, was yeah. You can do- you can you listen to it and you can hear you know half a dozen bands now. I heard a lot of Weezer. I heard a lot of yeah. Jack White. Yeah. Um, and it just it it worked for me. It had that '80s sound. It had that kind of post sound, and I used that very loosely. Right. Because so many you can as much as any any genre you can splice post punk post rock post pop there's so many subgenres there are but i liked the you the it's not so much that it's unique i felt like the pixies are textured there's a lot of different things it's lots of ups and downs there are there there are those crazy like fast punk almost screaming songs and then it would go into kind of uh here comes your man like the is that their original song yeah Wow. Yeah, like it was. It, I just found personally when I was when I was young. Google that. What's that? Oh, you're Google. He, he doesn't think it's an original Pixies. He is also surprised that it is. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I just that, always only heard the Pixies version. Maybe, maybe it is, but it sure sounded like a. It sounded Classic like rock a. And roll. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of the song, but it. Yeah, it reminds me of like a. Some well-known, you know, sixties. Like it, it has that feel. I think they did it so well. And that's the I, thing: if you yeah. set out to be like, we're gonna, we're totally gonna do the Beach Boys, guys. Just fucking watch. Right. And you do to the degree that we're sitting here being like, no, it's not really their song. <laughs> that's Is it really their song? Be a cover. Yeah. Like uh, Depeche Mode, just can't get enough. That's just so ridiculous that right. the Depeche Mode that I know is a little bit edgier. I know that it's drug fueled. I know that it's binge worthy. Yeah. So to think of that, it's just what, <laughs> what. <laughs> Why are you How guys doing you, that yeah. cover? Did you just yeah. do it like to get on the charts? You know, oh, this new band covered the Beatles. Whoa! <laughs> no, that's fucking them. Are you? Are they screwing with they you? They fucking yeah. did uh, that. Okay. But you know, we've talked about it lots of times. You do what you can to get your foot in the door, and then you can muscle your way in to be like, no, here is my creative project. Right. Here's what I want to do. No. I'm not okay with that. No, we know um, you're not okay with that. Remember that band? I can't remember what they were called. I've told Mitch oh, this great. story a lot of years, but uh, they they covered a Madonna. Every year he tells you this story? I've heard it probably every year. <laughs> Did I but, say that? But it's a classic tune story. Is that what he said? Every year? <laughs> Over the years? years. <laughs> Over the years. Yeah. Um, so this, this band, this Canadian band, they covered a Madonna song. And it wasn't even an old Madonna song. It was... Uh, some, one of her poppier kind of later age. Now we got to find out what All it was. All Madonna's songs Wasn't it are Out poppy. of Your Mouth? Out of, out of Your Mouth, I think, was the yeah. band. <laughs> yeah. So they... I got Here Comes Your Man stuck in my head now. They, they uh... I just want to dance like Marsha Brady. Music makes the people oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. together. That's so they fun. did like a rock song cover of this, and it wasn't even that old of a song when they did it. It it hit Canadian airwaves, and it took off, and they it became this huge hit for them. And I remember one time at the store, they must have been driving through to, through Lloyd and came into the store and they go, uh, he goes, uh, yeah, he, he's buying picks, just guitar picks. He goes, yeah, you got any discounts for musicians? I said, no, sorry, we don't. Because everybody's a musician that shops at a music store, by the way. <laughs> I um, would just want to walk in there someday if you guys didn't know me and just get a patch cable. And just be goes, like, yeah, I need this. I need for this. Reasons. For reasons. And just like cut the, the ends off and I just must, take the wires. I must know for what reasons you need this cable. <laughs> how come? Um, how, why, how, how come? Why come? Um, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> because. Nope. Nope. So, <laughs> Phrasing. So the, Phrasing. Guy, nope. so the guy, he says, you have discounts for musicians and, and I said no and he says well you know who I am right and I said no sorry who talks he says, like that right and he says he says I'm from I'm from that band out of your mouth and I'm like uh, who out, out of your mouth we did that Madonna cover I'm like oh great that'll be 
four dollars and whatever. At, at cents, least please. he knows like, the only reason he's famous was that he did the Madonna, Madonna cover. cover. Right. And I thought, <laughs> what the fuck? You have this like big hit in Canada. You're you're on a nation nationwide tour. You come into my small town music store and you go, Hey, you know, so do you give a discount on for musicians <laughs> fuck are you kidding me yeah you gotta be kidding me i just thought and then and then to like kind of name drop himself i just that's thought, man that's low that that's pretty douchey it's pretty douchey <laughs> yeah yeah so that was my experience with out of your mouth i don't know why we got to that uh, <laughs> too little we keep getting off track yeah yeah um, but there off there are tracks track. I, there were tracks i I was very aware of before I listened to the album, like Debaser. Debaser, and you, like, yeah. there are songs that everyone kind of has heard before. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Gouge Away. I, you, I, you I, know, what I found interesting was that the the length of the album yeah. is, is what, 40 minutes, and there's how many tracks on it? See, just shy of 40 minutes. There's a funny there's story about that. I read. Um, that Black Francis was criticized about that by his producer about how the length of his songs and how they average to be like uh, two to two and a half minutes per song on the, on this album. And his producer said, "Well, you can't release an album with most of the songs being under three minutes long." And he apparently took him to the record store, to the record store, and uh, gave him like a Buddy Holly greatest hits or something like that, and and showed him, and and, and it was clear that all. All of his hits were two minutes around two minutes right and it's like it doesn't matter the length of the song that's not what i'm trying it doesn't have to be three four minutes long it's just that's however long i want the song to be whatever screw you guys yeah. if, I, if i want to write a song that's a minute 55 that's that's as long Don't as it needs to, to be yeah. either it's good enough that you want to release it yeah or go fuck yourself yeah yeah i mean that's the way that it should be yeah i mean 15 tracks you know and Back to a favorite reference of ours, we did kind of get on the case of uh, some forty-one for the length the of the album, album and the amount of tracks that they had. Yeah, and you know we give them a little credit because they had these kind of silly things in between, which take up some tracks. If you want to look at it that way, I've listened to some albums where they have twenty tracks of silence before you get to the hidden. The song bonus, on, I hate oh, that the shit. bonus on track. The last track, yeah. Mind you, there are some albums where the bonus track is so fucking good. Uh, <laughs> they, seriously, they hide they that little gem in the back Offspring there. Offspring Americana. Yeah. The bonus track the on man? that. Pay the Man is so good. It's yeah. almost the best track on the album. I agree. It's great. That so was there, actually there a seminal album cases. for me. And that was right, I feel, when. Because their album after that was really bullshit. Wasn't it? Was no, it Americana? No, Conspiracy of One was after that. And I think a lot of people were hard on them for that one because it had, they started, that's when they started to incorporate a lot of the, like, um, digital tones and beats and oh, stuff. Yeah. They started to get a little bit more poppy in that way. Yeah, yeah, but that's I thought, how I feel. But Conspiracy of One still had some really good, I think, driving tracks. Did it? I don't know it And enough. then they did Splinter because people got pissed off about Conspiracy of One. Mitch and I have discussed Offspring at length. Um, they seem to release... Since Conspiracy of One, they seem to release one, you know, one song on the album that we're not sure if they're mocking Top 40 or not, but they're writing the song to do well in Top 40, and then the rest of the album is pretty good. Is legitimate. Yeah. yeah but they, they write this song that makes them awesome. a boatload of money, just one mm -hmm. song, and then the rest of the album is good. Except for their most recent album, I think it's called Days Gone By or something. Days Go By from Days 2012. Go by. That is just a garbage album start to finish. <laughs> it, just is, it just is crud. Start And that might crud. be showing their age. But um, There aren't too many albums that I can sit down and listen to front to back and say literally the entire album I really enjoyed, but Doolittle was one of those. And it probably comes from the past. Uh, it was kind of influential on my music taste um, mm. because I was, as Aaron knows, kind of a metal head, a metal, a metal geek. Oh, when yeah. I was when I was younger, oh. and Doolittle was the first album that kind of came along that I listened to in its entirety, and I was like, well, "There's no shredding guitars on this album." They're still kind of heavy, but then it's kind of heavy, and then and some of the songs. I like they, to think I had a little bit of a hand in your conversion, not conversion, <laughs> conversion, but your opening. 
Yeah, in your opening, you're I was, gaping. I was pretty. Open. Oh man, <laughs> I was pretty. Little, I like to think I had a little hand in your gaping. Oh, opening. well, it's not that gaping if it's a little hand. No. Is it like make room for Fanny? <laughs> Grabbed it, grab me by my strong hand. How is it? That's still funny. Um, no, but no, you're right. I mean, it it is that kind of album that even if you weren't old enough to take it in when it came out right it really can fit today's music it could fit the music of the 90s like ever since its release in 89 it's been a good album that you could take a track out of and still drop as a single today yeah and it would still do well was like there it's a, that good of an album yeah. do you think there was a point between when it came out and now where that would not have gone over well no because i guess if it was in if it was in 89 the whole like there's like been the a consistent and, rock yeah. scene since then because i wonder maybe like in the well no because there's always been an underbelly to the glam part well, if you look at the wiki page, it says Doolittle has continued to sell consistently w well in the years since its release, and in 1995, so six years later, was certified gold. It, it kept carrying steam, and I think it's their biggest album yeah. sell it to date. It just and, keeps going. And they con they still tour, and it's weird to me when I see the Pixies on stage. I've never seen them live, but just from YouTube videos and stuff, they look like the the most normal people that it's I've ever seen. It's always the normal ones, though, right? Yeah, that's the, but the thing. It seems like that, but it seems like Black Francis, the lead singer, is just some like old fat guy who works at like an it's investment banker. Yeah, and he just wears khakis and a like a normal shirt. And Maybe he can do all the normal shit because he has a creative outlet to get all his business out. Right. Totally well adjusted because instead of killing people, he's just fucking writing songs. Yeah, I, I instead of killing people. <laughs> It's very unassuming. This is, common, yeah. <laughs> this is a common thing. How do you get your frustrations out? The freezer? I don't kill people. Yeah, I go, you I go in jacket the in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I go jacket like a normal person. Like a normal person. <laughs> never, and when never I get the taste chance, his vichy swap. <laughs> it is cold for a reason. When oh. I get a chance, I put a little hand. <laughs> the gaping opening. I have a little hand in Mitch. I'm very pleased with how well this is going. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of us. I'm a little uncomfortable right now. Then we're doing it right. <laughs> Only a little. But I never meant for that to go public, Mitch. Oh. Um, but yeah, no, it was. I mean, it was a good album. I don't know what else we can say about it. It feels like we haven't said much about the album itself. But it's because we don't have any debates about it. It's because we all ah, agree so on it, and, we need and I don't have, have to defend it. We must have. Can't a we just bit. blow some more smoke up the pixies' butts? Yeah. I mean, can't, can't we just we... talk about the cover and how I, I thought it was a dog for the longest time until I read. You thought the, it was a dog? And I thought, well, I was always Let just glancing at it, it's and it's, it's a clearly monkey. a monkey, but when Is I was... Is it going to heaven? Yes, and it's from that song, Monkey Goes to Heaven. I like that one. And that one made so me good. stop in my tracks and yeah. kind of... <laughs> it's, it's interesting. And it I says mean, five, six, seven, just like at the end. If the devil is six, and he says that, then God is seven. Yeah, I. you know what I like about the lyrical content is if you really want to listen to the lyrics, yeah. there's stuff going on. There's stuff. But nobody knows what it is. Unless you listen to the lyrics, yeah. unless you listen to the lyrics, you just... It doesn't matter. Like, and that's what I think is so masterfully done about it is that it really is written, and I think a lot of a lot of good albums are written that it's way. Totally Whereas, if, if you really want to listen to them, it just there's depth. But if you don't, it's just a good song that it's you can sing to that catches you and yeah. you just enjoy it. And the the lyrical content ma can matter or not matter. Right. Either way, it works. It it's does, good. and it's he was so surrealist too with his lyrics. Like they were they were always so weird and so almost violent in debaser oh. when he says he's cutting up eyeballs and stuff. And people read those and wonder what the heck does this stuff mean? And, that, it out. and then they ask him, and he's like, I don't know, just it means whatever you want it to mean. Right. But, yeah. I like that answer, and yeah. I don't like that answer. A lot of bands do that, where they're like, whatever it means to you, man. But I'm like, no, it fucking means it something. It came from you, a place. You wrote it about something. I, it can Just because you tell me what it meant when you wrote it doesn't mean it changes its meaning for what I think, what it meant to me. Right. What if somebody just took a big parachute of salvia, wrote whatever came out, <laughs> and what was legible stuck? And it really didn't mean anything. Consciously, 
consciousness. It just sounds super uh, deep. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> but it I, probably sucks if you did that. To be that's right, because you can't have anything that means anything that's not totally legitimate. Well, let's just take this podcast as an example. As I get more inebriated, as the episodes go on, I make less sense. I think I'm making sounder points. In but your then brain. upon listening back to it, I'm significantly stupider. <laughs> Sometimes. Most of the See, time. See, I like to make my stupid consistent. Consistently uh, stupid. Yeah, but if you if you drank as... I mean, I drink more because this is in my house. If, if I we drank all drank as much as, much as, as you, I drank, I'd be dead. Ugh, we would. This podcast would be pretty messy, I Do think. Do I drink that much? I can't drink that much. <laughs> uh, I better finish this off. <laughs> On that note, I need another drink. No. Um, you would not... Actually, you would believe how many segments end with just that phrase. Yeah, I bet. I need a drink. <laughs> yeah, it's usually Aaron. All right, we need a break. I need. I a gotta break. go have a smoke. <laughs> black, 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 black Francis. I like the name. I mean, what's his? Why did he choose Black Francis? Well, as he's the black sheep name? of his family. I mean, I think he has a lot of kind of religious imagery in his lyrics. This one did. Yeah, I noticed a few songs. So Black him, yeah. Francis feels to me like it's a kind of an anti anti pope sort of idea. Rebellious. Sorry about the pops. Um, yeah, well, I don't know, like, um, like, uh, as opposed to a, a positive character in religious mythology, mm -hmm. um, he's kind of like, the black character gives me the imagery of, like, Francis, like a monk or something. Oh. And then, you know, black, particularly in, in uh, Eastern European mythology and that kind of thing, often references darker characters. After Dark. when the Pixies went on their hiatus, Black Francis went into a new band called Frank Black and the Catholics. Oh, yeah. see, um, there is a character called Black Peter in uh, in kind of Eastern uh, Christmas, Eastern European Christmas. Black yeah. Peter. My grandma used to tell me about Black Peter when I was a little kid. <laughs> yeah, so Black, <laughs> so Black Peter was this guy who. Was yeah. he evil? Who yeah, he, he was. Um, so basically... <laughs> no, honey, he was nice and cuddly. In, I'm scared. In, co <laughs> in communist Russia. <laughs> you don't make it sound like it's just Russia. Well, it was Eastern Europe. It was, you know, in, Eastern Europe was relatively poor. And, and anyways, this is part of the You had a good fucking mythology. reason to be afraid in Eastern Europe. Yeah. And, and they gave you more reasons. So basically she said, here's what happens. If you're bad, um, there was no Santa for her growing up. There was Black Peter. So if you're bad, I mean, Black Wait, does Peter. Does Krampus factor into your story at all? No. Okay. Just, no, just Black Peter. Stand when I was figure, a kid, really? it was just Black Peter. Oh. There was no such thing as Santa in Mariupol, Ukraine, Soviet Russia Civil War era where my grandma grew up. It, it was, was just, just Black, Black, Peter. Black Peter. So Black Peter is this half man, half goat. Ooh. Uh, evil creature and so he's got horns but he's man on the top and he's goat on the bottom and if you're a bad kid for the year Black Peter would come into your house through the window put you in a sack of coal and beat you with a stick until you were as black as the coal in the bag you just beat the shit out of you with a stick damn that's and that terrifying. was christmas so be good you better so be black peter good. doesn't come through your window put you in a sack of coal and beat you with a stick pretty much until lot, you're near death <laughs> there was a lot um, more negative reinforcement in eastern russia or eastern europe yeah that was you know that was that was the culture and so you wonder yeah. why russians and eastern europeans are no to nonsense. this day still a little bit uh brutal in their view of human life and its value etc and so on because that's ingrained it's it's part of the culture dating a long long time back long long time christmas in norway back. interestingly they don't have like santa claus they have a bunch of little like gnome sized santas and they are dressed like santa but they're little gnome sized santas and they all <laughs> run around together and do their oh. mischief they create mischief they don't they don't I, I don't think they bring gifts i'd have to clarify this with my wife <laughs> wait a minute but I think they're they just, just mischievous little gnomes yeah, there's mischievous <laughs> mischievous little gnomes it's funny you should say that because there is a there's a movie out there and i think that it is from the netherlands uh and it's about capturing wild santas 
Oh, uh, fun. You go into the... You there, go capture Santa? There, there's this group of Santa hunters, and uh, they go into the, you know, like the Black Forest-ish area. I know that's in Germany. Um, and they're getting these, like wildlife Santas and there's there's big ones and there's tiny ones and they export them as like hmm. uh, uh, as a like zoo animals Christmas oh. business Christmas yeah business. yeah and I think that they're kind of like Santa trolls That's I don't fun. it's it, expected yeah. to come up if I can remember what it's called we'll find it after I get a drink Team. Oh. oh, I wish I'd been rolling then. <laughs> we missed it. Oh, well. I haven't been racist in recent <laughs> episodes. Well. I probably have been racist in all episodes. Racist. 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 Here we go. We've found another. I thought the raisins, raisins. like the California raisins, always kind of came across a little racist. <laughs> We're all a bunch of raisins at Martha. How were the raisins. Calif- I don't even know. Um, I no, think I, I, I can jazz music. It. Oh, because they're all like, yeah, they're all jazz musicians, yeah. like the like the crows in Dumbo. Mm, we can't, yeah. we can't make them, we can't make them yeah. country musicians because they're they're purplish black in color, so they got to be jazz musicians. If they Charlie were Charlie Pride, if they brought them back. They'd, they be totally be, cool dudes. they'd be totally They'd be hip hop artists. <laughs> oh man! But they could be if they were if they were green raisins. Still, sultanas. By the time they're raisins, they're like a light brown. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Well. I'm right, trying to think white of the rappers now, right? Isn't one of the biggest rappers? I mean, Eminem, of course, but who's the new guy? He's Vanilla Ice. No, the, the new guy. <laughs> He's not new. Drake? No, Drake. Who's Drake? <laughs> Drake's not. I don't know anything white. about hip hop. No. We should do a hip hop album. Um, I wouldn't even know. Well, you know that uh, guy? Do. I don't know either. It'd, I think it'd be kind of funny. Actually. That hip hop guy. Remember bad. the yeah. the lead singer from Foxy Shazam just did a big hit single with him. He's from Seattle. I don't know. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is not oh. anywhere that I would be helpful at all. Wiki. I know a Foxy. friend, or I have a friend. You got who, that one friend? I have a single friend mm. who is partial to the urbane music. <laughs> that was such a nice way to put it. The urbane music. <laughs> well, I don't want to, I don't want to be like, Matt yeah, Colmore. he likes... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thrift shop guy. The, the thrift, thrift shop. I didn't know that was a real song because I'd only ever seen the Value Village ads. And then when I saw that Macklemore and Ryan Lewis were a real thing, and that was a real song, I didn't even know what to do with myself. They put that song on like a real thrift shop ad for Value Village. You've never seen. No. Oh my god. It's not Value Village. Yes, it is. No, it's it's Value Village. It's Value Village. It's a little classier. <laughs> it's a boutique Value Village. <laughs> It'd be a lot better if it was Velour Visage. Come on into Velour Visage. We have Velour. your soiled garments over here. Are you a hipster? <laughs> well, you can find all of the clothing that fits your it costs personal a lot preference to look this at Velour Velour Visage. I gotta start drinking coffee at these things. Co- Irish coffee. Why? Irish. Because I'm tired. And the alcohol. It's not even nine. You're more tired. You're gonna wake up, drink more alcohol. That's not how That's it not works how at, it all. Works at all. Oh. Not for me. <laughs> something wrong. Or Mitch. With me. Yeah. No. There's something wrong with me, guys. Road to Saddle River. River. Road to Saddle River. How do we feel about Western Canadian Road to Avonlea? <laughs> I, I didn't feel I, like a road to It was so Canadian. It was, Isn't but it? not just it Canadian. Was so it was so Albertan. Yes. yes. It was and so that's what I loved about it. <laughs> One of the things that really let me or enabled me to identify with the main character especially was his just I don't know the right emotion, but his interactions with the cows in the various stages. Oh yeah. <laughs> and just the like the grimace. I, I didn't understand the egg part. The breakfast thing was just that made me that. uncomfortable. Just any meat, I think it's any meat. Is that why he was like? Bleh. I guess so. Yeah, he was choking down the eggs. Yeah. Because I thought I just because they were so runny. No, I think yeah. he felt like he had to because he wanted to be a cowboy. Cowboy, yo, yo. cowboy. Yeah. Yo. Um, so he wanted to be a cowboy. And cowboys eat eggs for breakfast, and cowboys eat meat, right? So he, he wanted to be Rango, 
but he couldn't stomach the meat because he comes from an Eastern European butcher shop, and it and it grossed which him I, out. Which I thought was so interesting because I know like a lot of butchers, they're carnivores. They don't just yeah. wake up and go. I guess I'll be a butcher. But he's a sweet, naive young. It skips Eastern a generation. <laughs> if you if I you, love you've got a hard nosed dad. Speaking of the Eastern Europeans, when uh, his dad is like. Uh, the more money you have, the more quality of life you can buy. And then they start listing off oh, you can things. buy dishwasher, yeah. Electric <laughs> like dishwasher. dishwasher. Electric dishwasher. Magic dishwasher. hamburger machine. <laughs> Magic hamburger machine. Mm-hmm. And then she says, uh, and then she says, uh, electric dryer, clothes dryer, or whatever. And he goes, okay, enough. You know, like, <laughs> whoa, she's, whoa, whoa. That's a little like, crazy. Yeah. Okay, How dare you make your here. life of yeah. my servitude better? <laughs> yeah, huh? you know we get a little too far here, and you're no longer, you know. Yeah, let's not make life too easy on you, um, which I think is hilarious. But I like that he's so innocent in yeah. the whole. I didn't understand if, if he could like understand English at, at first because he was so kind of timid, and when people were talking but he to read him, it. he remember could. Oh he yeah, was reading could. the book in the butcher shop. No, I I remember that, so I I know that he grasped English. But when he yeah. first started talking to people, and he wouldn't really like say anything. Mm-hmm. Thing, and it reminded just, me of my dog. Your dog. Your dog. My dog is very. She's a consummate beta dog. Like uh-huh. if you come into a room that I'm in and you talk to the dog first, she'll curl up in a ball because she's just like I don't. Like, why? Why? No. No. What are you doing? Mom. Mom. Yeah. mom talk to mom. Talk to mom. Talk to mom. <laughs> so if you walk into my op- or my my room or my house or whatever. Oh hey Megan, how's it going? She'll come up and she'll check you out. Why are you talking to my mother? Right. What are you doing over there? And just the. I I'm love here. how much you love your dog. I just want to meet it to see if that, see if your dog embodies all of the things that you project it to be. Well, I you, want to see if I know your dog upon meeting it. If I if I already know it, she'll probably like be not five feet from me. So you, you they'll be she'll be the only dog around. Yeah. If you want, we will come wake you up when we pass your house at five thirty in the morning. Yeah, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I should ding get ding up ding earlier ding anyways. I mean, <laughs> I'll just wake up and shuffle out of bed and because I've been oh, drinking dog. and. Uh, <laughs> Because I've been drinking. Uh, well, it's so early. Ah, oh, you're a nice dog. <laughs> How? Yeah, I guess I got to get to work pretty soon. How epic was the, like, the Panavision? I found was the... It beautiful? The the landscape or the way that, that it was shot was so um, no. reminiscent of those... They, they probably did that on purpose of those old Western movies. Yeah. Like I had a plastic. hard time with that. When it first went in, I spent probably five minutes adjusting the settings on to. my video player and my TV to see what I could do to compromise. Yeah. Because I didn't know if part of it was the... Because the, the intro has the cowboy and Indian, so I didn't yeah. know if it was gonna like go into a full screen yeah. right. because they were doing something stylistic. No, it's in uh, what do they call it? Two point four eight to one, which is wider than sixteen by nine, which is a standard wide screen. They so label it as sixteen nine, though. They, th- I think yeah. that's where we ran into issues trying to watch it on the TV because yeah. it was like formatted to sixteen by nine, and then we tried to watch it, and it was so it's not weird. true sixteen nine. Right. By the way, yeah. anybody who's listening, email Francis Damberg. You can find his email on the message boards on the IMD pay, IMDB page for the film. Why don't we just film. post it? We, and we'll post it because you can buy the DVD for 25 bucks and that money is going to raise the uh, raise funds to have it properly converted for broadcast format. If you're a video everything. nerd, even if you don't like this movie, for the love of your craft, you're going to want them to do a better version. Yeah, it's... it. I, I mean, I love the movie. I have a childhood connection to it but also i'm an alberta boy like i'm an alberta boy i grew up in alberta and you guys say that this is distinctly alberta but it's distinctly the alberta i grew up in which is not today's alberta it's not but my husband who is an alberta boy and he is older than you are by a little bit Mm -hmm. um he remembers watching this Mm, overnight on showcase one time he's like i I, I, showcase yeah yeah, i must have been looking for something else but probably super channel back then. this part it would have been showcase showcase. and i was it took me a while to be like well of course because showcase is canadian so of course this would have been on there and it was the scene where they meet up with the uh the two native boys and they have the beers and stuff 
He's like, I, I've, I've seen this before. We're warriors. Was that the, the one? government pays us to yeah. shoot, shoot the gophers? Shoot the gophers. <laughs> Wasn't that the one guy from Corner Gas? It is. And yeah. I totally got confused because I went to the IMDb page ben for this Cardinal, movie, think, and yeah. he wasn't on the movie anywhere. No. He is. And yeah, he is. No, well, not that I could find. There's just not a still image of him. I and then I went to his IMDb, yeah. and Road to Saddle River wasn't on there. It only Are went back sure? to like '95. We Continue either. talk amongst yourselves. Interesting. I'm sure. I don't I know. Thought it was Ben Cardinal. Is that his? Cardinal name? sounds right. I don't know what the first. Maybe name I'm was. wrong. Anyways, um, I, I love all of that. Norman Manyheads. I, I mean, I could associate with every character because there is that character at some point in my life. You know, the Eastern European immigration. My family are Eastern European immigrants. The whole feel of it. You know, Norman. I love Norman Manyheads. I love Norman Manyheads. He's the he's yeah, my favorite. His character. ringworm and his short hair. No, no. Oh, no. no that's Sam, that's, that's uh, Oh, right. That's, Norman uh, many heads. Yes. Played okay, by he's... Sam Bob. Uh, or no, sorry. Sam Bob is Norman many heads. Paul Coor plays Sam, who has the ringworm. Right. Norman many heads is the Indian who rides right. on the car. I yeah. can't and he show goes, you the way. <laughs> I can take you there, but I cannot show you the way. Which yeah. makes a lot more sense the more you watch it. I love... I just love, you know... You got tobacco? I take tobacco. I take tobacco? I don't have any tobacco. <laughs> oh, you know, his dad, he's talking to his dad right. and he's like, Oh, why are you going around with these guys? They have tobacco. <laughs> That's the only reason why <laughs> yeah. he's hanging out with these he's guys. Just, he doesn't <laughs> like white people. I love the story yeah. that he tells. He was like, they're, they're doing the campfire story and he goes, Everybody in the past, everyone used to be blue, eh? But then the Great Spirit gave them all different colors and gave yeah. them different things to do. To the black man, he gave water. To the yellow man, he gave uh, the sky. To the red man, he gave the earth. And to the white man, he gave fire. And one day, when they all, whatever it is, yeah. come together again. When they all learn what they're supposed to learn. Yeah. yeah. He'll make them all blue again. <laughs> And he's so pleased by telling this campfire story, and everybody else Everyone's is like, sitting what around the, the fuck fire is going like, oh. on? Yeah. yeah, the businessmen, you know, sum it up with, "Oh, Norman, you you really know how to liven up a party." Yeah, that's what he says. It's, yeah. I find it so quotable. I just love it. Elvis was the ultimate Indian. Oh, that <laughs> you know? was good. Yeah. Elvis. I'm I'm on a vision quest, eh, no. to find my my spirit animal. The problem is, I have so many visions. <laughs> I don't know which ones are real, eh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but yeah. then I get into some pretty strong tobacco sometimes. Like, it just is so... I think it's so quotable. I love the whole... I love the whole film. It's so good. Uh, listed as Ben Cardinal? No. Lauren Cardinal is what we know him as, though. Mm. Oh. Yeah. What? Like, a name change? Or what do you Must mean? Must be. Oh, maybe that's why I didn't recognize it. I also noticed that the old guy who teaches them to ride a horse, played by Michael Hogan, yep. um, was in season two of Fargo. As season the, two of Fargo. Yeah. As and the, multiple seasons of... As um, the old guy, the old pop-up guy who got uh, um, had the paralyzed stroke? in this chair. Yeah, had the stroke. No! Yeah. He's right? actually very, very good. He was also in... Um, Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dieter was in Robin Hood Men in Tights. Eric Allen oh. Kramer. <laughs> I yeah. didn't want to be like, that's totally Lil John because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to yeah. Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. Right. Oh, he's just a tall, Dieter. muscly, white guy. <laughs> Zavall is down, yeah. <laughs> Zavall is down, yeah. It smells yeah. like new spray paint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got the Canadian Mountie. It's so good. Uh, Bessie Bingo, the cow flop. Oh my God. That happened. That happens in real small towns. That happens in real small towns. Bessie Bingo. If you guys don't know what it is, look it up, listeners. Um, Goggle it. Goggle no, it. No, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of the actors in the film actually went on to have I was surprised really at that, yeah. I met I met um, the writer-director, Francis Damberger, when I went and picked up the DVDs. I went to his house to do it. And I did that because he grew up with my aunt in the small town that my small family comes town. from. Small town and Alberta. so I just, I messaged him. I popped over on my way to a family reunion thing and he takes me to his, uh, his office, which is this awesome little like cabin on his farm property. Cool. This beautiful old two-story farmhouse, gorgeous house. And he's 
just going to sit down with me and, and chat. And I was starstruck by him because I love this movie so much. But I didn't have time because my girls, my little baby girls were in the car. So I had to had to get moseying on. But he says, you know, you know, anytime, just give him a heads up. If he's around, he'll hang out. He has the car sitting in his No lawn. way. The car I from may, this movie? I may offer him to buy that Is car. Is that a <laughs> store. It, No, it's a Honda Civic. Oh. An old it's Honda an old Civic. It's an old two-door Honda Civic. <laughs> and it's awesome. That's cool. I mean, I just, yeah, I just love the film. I find it so quotable. I think a lot of people would find it dry and slow. I I feel like but, there's, there's probably a lot of people out there who wouldn't get it, I think. And that's the yeah. thing. Like, yeah. between us having the... And I think that, obviously, we Very have... Very Marthithian in its feel. Yeah, yeah. And... Okay. <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, it reminds us of home. Ultimately, I suppose. Continue, Meg. No. No? no? I feel like it would be a existential crisis to continue uh, with my train of thought continue no we're, I like we, these, we've been I here like, for a while i like it existential <laughs> talk crises. About our, our earth lives <laughs> <laughs> and i think that you know canada has a little bit of that dryness of the uh english humor yeah and i think that yeah. that lends itself to this especially because it, it is it's such a it's not a slow burn per se but the comedy kind of is it doesn't it's like a consistent ebb and flow as opposed to big waves crashing right the shore. it's very situational humor and like not you, slapstick you it's not to, no you, you, you can you need yeah. you should be watching it to think that it's funny you can't just walk into the room yeah and s understand that you've seen a joke because it's not buffoonery yeah necessarily. yeah like you have to catch yeah. the irony and all of the little things like when they go to the kkk meeting right and one of <laughs> <laughs> and there's so there's three of them yeah and it's uh it's the cowboy kid and it's norman many heads and it's lewis lewis you got any tobacco, you dried up, stinky old fart? <laughs> I would just love Maybe. it. Uh, Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> I love when they just like, it just shows them outside their vehicle, just kind of staring at a dead carcass. And then they just walk back to their car. <laughs> just, like, that's I the didn't entire, understand that's that. The well, they scene. must have hit yeah. it on the way. <laughs> and because it's such a tiny car, it's worth yeah. stopping to and see. And none of them yeah. are really accustomed to it. That's and the other thing course, I love. And of course, poor cowboy. Oh, yeah. Poor, cowboy. like, I loved cowboy Yo. just because he, you know, obviously he had such a dream and to come to terms and especially with the end mm -hmm. oh my if i had have been in a different emotional state i easily would have sobbed during Ooh, this movie poor guy it was you know yeah. you do all this work all of your dreams you come so far for something and then you just have to be like no i sob for yeah. lewis i sob for lewis i love lewis and when lewis so when he doesn't ride the buck and bronc yeah that rank bronc. That I love rank. the way he talks. He's always spitting his tobacco. Yeah. All over his shoe. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, Cowboy is just... Cowboy's He's like a just, giant child. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And so he doesn't ride the rank bronc. And, bronc. and Lewis still... He takes off that champion bronc riding belt buckle. And he hands it to him. And he says, it ain't what it is. It's what could be. And there's just these parts in the film that really if you can't identify with them you haven't experienced a human existence i think like there's just it is an emotional film if you let it be but if Some you just want it to be inherently human yeah yeah and if you just want to let if you just want to let the movie be delightfully funny you can let, let it be, be what it is but don't want, tear it apart don't look for something else yeah. Which, i mean there's even sadness in the part in the uh scene where where um oh shit the guy he loses says, his golf shoes. I know. Well, that's kind of yeah, sad. <laughs> and then when and then when he's sitting in the field, the last time that we see Sam, he's sitting yeah, in the field. Yeah, where they found Norman Indian Medicine heads. Stone. That's got some emotion. And then, but anyways, uh, Norman says, or one one of the guys says, uh, I think it's Dieter. He says, my. Uh, my city is is famous for being the dirtiest city in Europe. Yeah. And then Norman responds with, my "Oh, reservation. my reserve is famous too. It's famous for the most suicides." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's it, it's a small world. It's in one hand hilarious to hear that, but on the other hand, unbelievably depressing. And still and, true. And still true. Ten, and Dieter and Norman both sit 13 there. Thirteen years later. Norman's got a smile, an uncomfortable smile on his face and Dieter just looks sad and in that moment you're both laughing because it's such an absurd thing to to say with almost 
pride and completely and earnest. then at the uh, and completely earnest but then you the more you watch it I, I think the more you look at that smile and just think of how much sadness is in the smile of Norman and so that's what I think is so wonderful about the film is it there's all kinds of things going on and I think it. if anybody's got a reason to be depressed it's probably a native person they got a lot going on yeah yeah it's all, a lot of it's unfortunate when he's crying when he's meditating in front of the or not meditating but doing his his uh thing in front of the buffalo oh, yeah. right yeah and he is he's got he just wants to find his spirit animal <laughs> and here's the spirit animal talk to him and it's the buffalo norman take me home it must be a baby because it's just oh, little it's tiny and he's, yeah. but he's <laughs> laughing and crying at the same time norman and you're so happy for him but then you're also laughing at the fact that a buffalo just talked to him or he heard a buffalo talk to him which is absurd so it just i think the movie is wonderfully sorrow filled with sorrow wonderfully filled with joy um it sounds like a complex film. It is. It's for, surprisingly complex. For a small, independently shot Alberta movie. Entirely filmed in Alberta. Entirely. Well, that was the thing. Watching it with Chris, he was like, landmark, landmark, yeah. landmark. Mm -hmm. Those billboards were real. Landmark, yeah, landmark. Yeah, I'm beef. serious. If it ain't Alberta, <laughs> it ain't beef. And yeah. I, I, I looked at it, I was like, hey, go fuck yourself. No, there was one outside of Airdrie, and there was one outside of the reservoir, so... Oh, yeah, they were everywhere. They were everywhere, yeah. yeah. And Albertans still feel that way. Like, old school Albertans are still feel like, if it ain't Alberta, it ain't be. <laughs> How well, mad were they about the whole Earls debacle there? A um, lot of them mad, and that's why yeah. Earls is now like back that's... very quickly back to selling I Alberta heard beef. so many yeah. beautiful conspiracy theories about that. Like, the guy who owns, like, the top, top, top guy at Earls is Muslim, and they're just trying to get oh, all, all no, beef yeah, out. Right or they want it to all be uh, halal, so they're not letting the Alberta farmers do it. Uh, Whatever. I love when people talk about like <laughs> A&W runs commercials about it being hormone free mm -hmm. and people get so up in arms but I was I feel like would you if, if every farm was forced to be 100% organic would you pay the inflated exponentially inflated cost to offset the cattle that dies would you be happy with the culling required no i don't give a shit i mean you what i find interesting actually on the hormone thing is if you're a vegetarian and soy is your primary protein source soy naturally biologically has more hormones in it than your hormone filled steak but it's like natural if you're a male vegetarian you're not supposed to <laughs> use soy as your primary source of yeah. protein because you'll grow tits and lactate Fun. so I i'm just saying delicious. from a delicious. from a nature standpoint <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it's silly. back to the kkk part though oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> so hard oh you have kkk here Oh yeah, we've got some of those neo-Nazis too. And there's only one of each of them. <laughs> All of the people at the thing wearing bed sheets, and one of them's a native, which is hilarious. But yeah. you don't know. <laughs> no, they don't know because he's wearing a bed sheet. <laughs> but how can you not tell? And then he goes he goes, This is kind of this is kind of dumb, eh? Yeah, my wife told me I shouldn't come, and everybody just thinks it's so stupid that they're even there. And yeah. they just but turn that, around and walk away like it was <laughs> the biggest waste of time. It's just dumb, which I love because that's the f that's Canada too, you know. Big and dumb and white. Well, no, it's not a big deal. I mean, and they white. go there to check it out because Great white north. <laughs> they think it's silly, but they do. They think it's silly. What Canadians think it's silly? We what? don't view things that way. The, the whole KKK? racism shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, was, I was waiting for you to be like, item. We think <laughs> item is silly because I was... All of that racism you. shit. I mean, that's typical of Canadians and Albertans. It's, you know, I don't give a fuck. I mean, like, he says, what? I'd rather start a bowling team. They've got cool uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we that's typical. We don't, don't we don't yeah. care. We don't that's care what that. you... Giant fabric store? We don't store? care what you are. Yeah. Yeah. Be what you are. We don't care what you are. I don't know if I agree with that anymore. I think. Well, well that would be anymore. That's the way we used to feel. Uh, when the movie came out. And yeah, there was I mean, no multi, one to be afraid of except vegetarians. In the well, mid 90s. I remember growing up, multiculturalism r literally meant, okay, Canada's multicultural. And so then we'd just sit there and go, oh, you're whatever. I don't care. Uh, do you want to play hockey? It doesn't make any difference. Yeah, you yeah. want to play hockey? Whatever. What do you have for lunch? Who cares? 
that's what it meant who cares but now today it's like oh you're whatever you are well if it's not white and it's not male and it's not christian then you are elevated and i better be extra cautious and, and I, give well, you more i wonder how much of it is people coming into canada being happy to be there and being like okay we just want to blend in yeah versus coming and wanting to so sternly maintain their identity that they are requesting slash demanding why and i fuck? use that term loosely preferential uh yeah why the fuck in my opinion would you leave opinion, the country opinion, yeah opinion. Opinion. we need to have why like a fuck, jingle that we play when it's opinion you... time it's opinion time just like your butthole we have one this, it's opinion that time would be go always with aaron why the fuck would you leave your country to come to another country to do your earnest to change your new country to what your old country was why the fuck didn't you just stay where you were if it was so good and all those things were so great why the fuck did you come i think i don't get that i do not understand it i don't get it maybe they just want the nice things just, I, just but you the can't nice have things. the nice things because the reason why your country's fucked up is because their systems do not allow for the nice things they don't allow for the nice things our western european and north american systems allow for the nice things that's why we have them I because our systems allow for there's them. A, a little amount of generalization possibly happening i think just a little the the idea that i like that you're just downing the rest of that this could only get better this you know this has I'm one just way to stop. go Tell him you guys want to pour some your liquor into my oh, liquor God. you want some banana popsicle you're not drink that's your first drink yeah i keep putting yeah. ice in it i'm half i'm three i'm two-thirds through my second drink i ate a huge supper before i got here no, i don't I'm, have space for liquor before you finish that before you finish that statement i'm not generalizing there are plenty of immigrants that i know spend time with and i'm i have immigrant friends <laughs> I totally am immigrant friend. No, I do. I do. I do. And But that's just to say that I think a, a lot of people say it's a generalization. The problem with generalization or stereotype or whatever you want to uh, call different facets of that whole scene, that doesn't make quite sense. It doesn't. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be great for you no, to go no, back no, and no. listen to. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, people generalize. Everybody generalizes. Everybody stereotypes to a degree. But the reason why is because the majority do fit that mold. That doesn't... And just because the majority do fit that mold doesn't mean that you paint everyone with the same brush. I will give everybody a fair shot, regardless of where they come from, who they are, their gender, their skin color, their ethnicity, their religion, whatever. I'll give every everyone a fair shot. But that doesn't mean I don't also acknowledge that a majority are this way, you know? I'll trust you until you give me a reason not to trust. I never trust anyone. <laughs> never trust a soul. Never trust a soul. What were you going to I say? Know, was, did, did you have anything? Yeah, no, I didn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. I liked the saddle. Let's move off. I of, liked. Let's, I li move, let's move off the politics and back. To I the wondered saddle why he had to be naked in the saddle. Uh, like that know. was the thing that confused me the most. A couple times he was naked. Remember when he when he wakes up from the like smudge, the sage smudge for healing. He runs out of the teepee. Oh yeah, well that that doesn't. Too. None of the other situations where he was naked Who made me him? stop. The old Indian guy. Oh, must have been. <laughs> yeah, why not? His friends. Someone's got to undress him. But in his own room at the start of the movie, that was my main thing to be like, what? Well, he sleeps in the nude. I guess he was just riding the saddle before he went to bed. Oh yeah, when he's just like. See, well, that's, that's the only part that really made me go. What? His mom obviously assumes that he's banging some chick in there. So the a next leather scene chick. is a, him a he's hiking on the side of the highway. So I guess I mean we've been talking about things we liked about the film. Is there anything you didn't like about the film? Was it Dislikes. too Alberta? It, it was very Alberta. But was it too but, Alberta? I, I think that's what they were going for. Like, yeah, it's I, like saying is a movie yeah. too British or too I, African or too Asian. It's like a slice of Canadiana or Al Albertiana. Al Albertiana. Yeah. Al Albertana. I, no, I didn't. I didn't mind that. I I think overall, I enjoyed the movie. I was a little bit bored in certain parts, but I think that's kind of with that dry humor that kind of comes with it. But 
I don't know. Overall, pretty solid movie. I don't have that kind of connection that Aaron does to it. His childhood wearing out the VHS tape over and over again. But as someone who watched this for the first time, I would recommend it. I have. Yeah? I did it on my other on-air show. Oh, did you? Oh, well, Consummate Alberta. How can you not? Yeah. Although it became a fun extra part of my bit to be like, if you can find it. Right. If yeah. you can find it. If good luck. But fucking you, watch it. Yeah. But on your next episode, you can tell them where to find it. Well, I just said this Google it. About it. Yeah, fair enough. They'll find it if they dig dig deep enough. It's not on the Netflix. I don't know how <laughs> kids are watching movies nowadays. I think as a kid there's who the, there's thought the old about lady. pursuing <laughs> old uh, you Jenkins. know acting yeah. and directing, I had a, an extra connection to it because mm-hmm. I thought, here's a guy from small town Alberta, where my family grew up, and he made he made a movie yeah. that I could rent at the movie store. You know, I can see that being a, an influence in your life almost. Yeah, that's yeah. a little less for me because my brother-in-law has been in a couple movies, so it's it doesn't surprise me to see something grassroots come up. Well, now as an adult, I mean, I was a child at that point. But oh, now okay. as an adult, you know, I've had an aunt and a cousin who are extras in the TV series Fargo. Oh, neat. Oh, yeah, because it, it was they were, shot in Alberta. They were actors in it, but they were extras. So, you know, I mean, as you get older, the film business and television gets a little bit closer to home, kind of almost wherever you're from. Um, but as a child, it was like, a, you know, a movie. A movie, stars in the sky. Yeah, and it's different when you can rent it at a store back in the day, you know? Like, it's it's not like someone filmed it on their VHS and hand distributed it, you know? <laughs> it's not a leg. You could rent it's not it. a scene. <laughs> you can rent it. For listeners at home, we have the, I have the poster. Um, Big old naked road European. River. Big old naked. <laughs> we should probably post a picture of that on a Facebook. Page. Yeah, we that could, could all be crowd our, That could be our week photo. nine photo. What's yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Um, but it's also signed by Francis Danberger and uh, framed in a... Francis Danberger. Framed in a very Albertan... They signed it. It does. It's framed in like lath. Albertan reclaimed fence wood frame. Oh, yeah. Frame. Um, you know, built by a rancher. A rancher. So Alberta. Rancher. I wish I had a raisin I could crunch. So basically, everybody needs to watch the film. This, that's the impression I get. Yeah. Everybody watch Road to Saddle River. And everybody listen to Doolittle. Listen to Doolittle and everybody eat sun-made um, orange, orange cream, cream yogurt, yogurt. covered This raisins. may be the first episode where we kind of all agreed on wow. everything. The Facebook huh? post. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's the sound you should make when you read the week, true. week nine summary. Yeah. Week nine. Huh? Week 9 is That's probably good, the most yeah. boring episode you've heard today. What? <laughs> boring? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Meg, you said you liked episode 8 best because it seemed like we were the most agreeable. I, and I feel like saying most agreeable limits it. I felt like we had decent conversations because they were just kind of all over the place and none of it was defensive. See, and I liked episode seven because we You're got a, a little bit aggressive. Because Aaron, fuck you, Aaron, Matt, Aaron, Meg, <laughs> and Mitch, fuck you both. Aaron, is yeah, both screw us for being so pleasant. Yeah, he I likes bringing out the hate in people yeah. and then fueling that. That's because I love, I love the hate. It's our differences that make us unique, and it's our differences that make me love. You're like Darth Everyone. Vader. I hate you. No, no. Our differences bring us together, Mitch. No. I want to be C-3PO. No. No, they don't? Yeah, they do. <laughs> Let the hate flow through you. Let the hate flow through you. Or, um, uh... No, I don't do that. I could be an Ewok. I'm little. I'm little. I love the little hate. I'm not so super fuzzy. <laughs> I love the hate. So you're don't neutral? take that out of context. You're a big I, pile of oatmeal? I don't love people who hate. I just, you know, if I don't like the higher differences. He would love to bone it. He would put his little hand in his skin. Oh, no. no. <laughs> he would jack it in the freezer. Uh, <laughs> if hate was a person, I would oh, jack it in the freezer. <laughs> Have you guys been to our Facebook page lately? Because this is a great time to check it out. Okay. Hologram program deactivated.